they were discarded. But we had a period where early in the war, I think the officer carry 45, Colt 45. Then they came, they came out with this rising gun. And then, the, of course, the carbine. And the carbine was the one that lasted. Yeah. But I, I, know, I know a lot of officers just said, no, I'll give me that M1. Uh, you ever have the? Uh, you ever try the M2 carbine? No, I, I'm not. No, I'm not. not uh -uh. Well, it was the same size, and, but it was. Uh, it could fire uh, automatic. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. yeah I had yeah, that in Korea. I, I did have in Korea. Oh yeah. Did um, uh, they had? You have any uh, machine guns in your platoon or anything like that? Or well, just all rifle. Yeah, not in the not in the platoon. We had a, in a rifle company. You would have three three rifle platoons and a weapons platoon. And in your weapons platoon, of course, you have the, uh, you have the uh, air-cooled machine guns and you have the 60 millimeter mortars. Any BARs? Oh yeah, the BAR, yeah. Had a BAR in each fire team. Oh, so you, that, had, you had BARs too in your rifle? Yeah, platoon. yeah. So we'd have a, we'd have it in a, in a platoon with three squads, you'd have each, uh, each, each fire team would have a have a BAR, but so you'd have three BARs in each squad. And, uh, the BAR is a Browning automatic yeah, rifle. Yeah. How, it was autom how automatic was it? I mean, what, is it when you just hold the trigger down, it would yeah. just keep firing? Mm -hmm. no. It was considered a. Uh, frankly, I always thought it was. Personally, I thought it was overrated the weapon, but a lot of marine, a lot of people think it's a wonderful weapon, but it's heavy. Things heavy. I've talked to guys that use Tommy guns too. Yeah. Tom, did any did any guys have those? We didn't. Uh, I no. There were. I I I didn't have any. We fired Tommy guns, but I don't know in a in a rifle company actually they weren't even at that time they weren't. Uh, I, I, guys that said you know they they threw their you know they traded somebody they yeah. found one somewhere yeah. or something uh, something like them. Yeah. Know. I know I know some there uh, there were Tommy guns. Not, not in a rifle company. Did everybody carry hand grenades? Well, not not everybody, but uh, there were some. But they were, yeah. I don't think I never carried any, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we the hand grenades were sure used. The um, well, we'll get ahead a little bit, but the platoon, uh, the guys in Lejeune, did you stay with them all pretty much all through the? Uh, through the war? No, was no, it, it was pretty much a, it was pretty much a, back then, pretty much mass confusion, you know, they, no, it weren't with them very long. Not very long. And eventually... Did you train more than one uh, platoon while you were at Lejeune? Or? Uh, personnel changed. It, it would be pretty much the same. Uh, but people same would come thing, through. Yeah, and they, so, yeah. yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't there, you know, wasn't there too long. Where did you Where did you go from there? Then? Well, we went the, from there to uh, went across country to uh, Pendleton, and it was there not too long, and then went to American Samoa. Uh, and let's find. I'll tell you what. I've got a map up there. I'll yeah. give you a thing here. Yeah. Let me go. I'm going to wind this yeah. out a little bit, and you can kind of point. We'll give us a little bit of an idea of where that uh, was. Uh, yeah. It would be down in the far right. You're down in the right area, I believe. I don't even know if it's on that map or not. Probably not. New Caledonia is way yeah. to the right. Yeah, here's Samoa. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, and the reason we went there... Yeah, point that out again. I'm kind of coming yeah. down a little bit. Of a, okay. American Samoa. Right. Just the, to the... The harbor, Pango Pango. Oh, I've heard of that, yeah. yeah. So it's and relatively near the Solomon Islands. Uh, it's just too. It's, a, it's off off of the Solomon Islands. Uh, it looks like a. Well, it's uh, actually this this isn't uh, is close to scale. No, no. Because I mean, American is. Samoa is not too far from Hawaiian Islands. Okay, all right. I don't know how far west, but I would get yeah, not over not over two thousand miles, maybe only a thousand. Right. And Samoa, I mean uh, the Solomon Islands are. Way over here, right. not too far, like, well, I don't know, seven or eight hundred miles off the coast.
coast of Australia. Yeah. But Samoa was, I guess, Marines were sent there, number one. Uh, of course, nobody knew what the Japs were going to do. And this would have been when? Wait, what what uh, month? Uh, this is in '42 still. So. Well, let's see. That would have been, uh, yeah, yeah. We went there probably, uh, probably yes, the latter part of '42, and uh, the nobody was sure. This well, for, for example, for yeah. example, American Samoa had barrage balloons. I mean it. Barrage balloons. There were barrage balloon battalions, and thinking, I guess, you know, the Japs going to come in and attack, and these barrage balloons will keep them from keep them from yeah. doing any precision bombing. Yeah. Now, that was a far-fetched, obviously far-fetched thought, but back then they didn't know. But also, we were, we were in training and uh, just kind of waiting for our next uh, our next our next assignment. Uh, but American Samoa was really not that far from Hawaii. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh -huh. So, what was your next assignment then? Well, we went from there to uh, we went from there to uh, the staging area. Went to Bougainville. I, I'm sorry. Went to Guadalcanal okay. and uh, training. Yeah. Okay. And this was after Guadalcanal had been secured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's uh, show me where that is on the map yeah. too. It's in the Solomons. Yeah. Yeah. Here are the Solomon Islands. Right. And Guadalcanal was Guadalcanal was obviously this is not the scale. No. Guadalcanal was one of the a large southernmost island. Mm -hmm. Bougainville was a northern right. Solomon Island. In Guadalcanal, we went there and just. Uh, would that have been like early '43, more or that less? That would have been, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it, yeah. I think it's about they secured it towards the end of the year, I believe. Yeah. Did you talk to any of the Marines that had been on Guadalcanal oh, yes. when they came off? Yeah. Uh, of course, Guadalcanal was that was the, that was the first. Uh, uh, that was uh, that really was. That was the landmark. I mean, that was the first, our first offensive, uh, land offensive in the Pacific. And of course, we trained there, and then, then we went from there to, uh, went from there. We were, in, we were in New Zealand mm -hmm. for seven weeks, and I guess I don't, I, I don't know whether we we're in New Zealand for, to let us have a little, a little. Uh, down here. Well, they trained a lot. I, you know, I, I, that movie, uh, Battle Cry, did you see that movie? Yeah. They, you know, they were, all would go to Wellington, they'd be training in New Zealand, yeah. and then they'd stage from there and go somewhere, and then yeah. they'd always go back, it seemed like, right. to stage out of New Zealand. Yeah. So I guess that happened a lot. Yeah, we were in the, the Auckland range. area, New Zealand. Where, uh huh. This. It doesn't really show. I think, yeah. <laughs> this it, map, this map is. <laughs> well, d d New Zealand is. See, it's down where that globe is. Where yeah. it would be. It's, it's south of Australia, so it doesn't right. really show it on there. It'd be over in there Off somewhere. In here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had seven weeks in New Zealand. How did you like New Zealand? Well, I like. We went to First Liberty we had. I mean, I'll never forget. Went downtown Auckland. We had. Steak dinners were two and six. That's 40 cents. And we had three steak dinners. We just lined them up one after another. They were so hungry for some kind of food, good food. And I'll never forget, we had a guy named Maxwell from Georgia. He was a big, big gorilla. And he came in there and he said, I want a dozen eggs sunny side up. They couldn't understand him. <laughs> sunny side up. Dozen eggs. I finally brought the manager over, and he convinced him that he wanted a dozen eggs. And she had told him, "Sir, this is not a grocery store." <laughs> he wanted a dozen eggs side, side up. He not only had a dozen, he had another dozen. <laughs> Sunny side up. <laughs> I said, but we had a we had a good time. 
in, in New Zealand. Where did you go from there then? Uh, well, we went from there to uh, went from there to uh, uh, well, we went we went back to Guadalcanal for a short time, and then then went headed for Bougainville. And that was my first my first landing, my first combat. Okay, and let's uh, let's take a look at that on the show me again uh, on the on, on no on the on the yeah. wall there yeah. Yeah, Bougainville. Just Bougainville is, is basically here. up up the slot from Guadalcanal, I yes, guess. Uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, Guadalcanal is, uh, is pretty much Guadalcanal is quite a bit south of. They're yeah. they're they're big islands. Bougainville was probably a hundred to hundred twenty five miles. Now they they had Japs have an air base there in Bougain on Bougainville. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, did they have, uh, did their ships uh, sail out of there? I mean, did they have a harbor and stuff like that? Or? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really know why, why Bougainville was so strategic, except that it was five or six hundred miles up, in other words, toward, toward Japan. Right. We were moving. That, that gave us a staging area. Yeah. And we're, we're We've got to get we got to get bases we got to get bases further. Yeah. Well, well, they could still threaten Guadalcanal from Bougainville pretty easily too. I, oh, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, they so could right. get them off their back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So tell me, uh, what was the landing like then? Well, my, our our landing was. Uh, let me put it this way: it wasn't like you saw Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. It wasn't like that. We were. We were opposed, but it was not, we were not heavily opposed. And we landed with a minimum of casualties. And what did you land in? What, was it, what kind of landing craft? Uh, we landed in the, uh, in the uh, craft that... Uh, would it go up on the... Yeah, up the... On, uh, I mean, would it go up the ramp? On, well, it had a ramp. Yeah, a ramp. Goes down. But would it go up onto the land? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they'd go. They'd go just far as they could it's go. It's an amphibious. Type. Yeah, and then down to go the ramp. That that landing craft was uh, replaced the old Higgins boats. Right. That was. I was just going to talk about. They they built those in Evansville, as you know. Yeah, those Higgins that's right. boats right down on the river. And right. I've got pictures of a whole bunch of them. Yeah. You know, during the war there. Yeah. You remember what the landing craft was called? Was it an LST or? An LC no, it wasn't an LST. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The LST, the LST was well. I'm, I'm thinking when we actually hit the beach, we hit the beach in a in a landing craft that would hold maybe 40, 50 men, uh, something something like that. And of course, the LST was a uh, uh, that was the big one they built. Now they built a lot of LSTs there, and that was a pretty good sized. Uh, I think it was vessel. Uh, but I've forgotten what that... Uh, okay, so well, let, the guys you, you, okay, you were leading a platoon in? Uh, a company, a, a rifle company, company. Just like before, a rifle company. Yeah. Now how long had these guys, how long had they been with you? Been, had, had you been well, training together with them? We, we, for the most part, for the most part, uh, we've been together uh, for I would say, for the most part, uh, a year or a year, maybe more. Now, some some had been transferred in, some out. But I would say that of the of the company that landed on Bougainville, I'd say probably 60, 70 percent of it had been had been with us for a year. And were you the only officer? No. Uh, uh, Company rifle company has uh, uh, we have four platoons and each platoon is commanded by a lieutenant and then I was the company commander I was a captain oh. and the I had an exec executive officer who was a uh, first lieutenant and so actually there's six officers in a rifle company was Aubrey so with you no no he <laughs> He, we, 
we'd parted, he'd, he'd landed a very, very, he'd been at Tarawa, which was a tough, tough operation, a lot tougher than Bougainville, and uh, he got shot up pretty bad at Tarawa. But, uh, what was the morale like of your, your guys going in? Good, good. Hey, we, we had them, uh, I mean, you know, I interview a lot of these pilots, and of course, they, you know, like on the bombers, and they've got a ten-man crew, and yeah. it's it's like a team. They work as a team. It's almost like a football team or something like that. That you count, you have to count on each other. Whether yeah. you doesn't mean you didn't socialize together so much or whatever, yeah. but you you know you respect each other, and, and is it kind of like that uh, in your particular? Oh yeah, I I would say I would say morale was marvelous, and. Uh, there were a lot of people back then, this, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people, this, uh, a lot of people wanted to kill a Jap. I mean, some of those crazy guys wanted to kill one with a knife and thought you weren't a man to you. I mean, it was, it, I, I, I was, uh, I, I didn't want to engage in a knife fight with one, but I wanted, it. I wanted, I mean, I, I, we were, we were fired up. Now, each operation, the longer you'd go, the less enthusiastic you became. Human nature, you know. After two operations, I would not have been, I would not have been as good a man in the third operation as I was in the first or the second. I mean, you, you, you figure your percentages. I mean, I'm sorry, you've been lucky. You've been lucky so far. How long is your luck going to last? Were the guys, were they from all over the country pretty much or mostly from a certain area? Pretty That's much, right. pretty much. Uh, a lot of uh, Marine Corps, Marine Corps, uh, and I presume still does, has, has a lot of good Southern uh, men. I mean, it, it just seems that we had a lot of, a lot of good ones from the South. Of course, oh, they were fall over. Though. Right. I mean, I think, I think some good guys we had from Brooklyn, but uh, yeah, pretty much from all over. So when you're going into Bougainville, how, <coughs> um, what wave did you go in? I landed the first wave. <coughs> anyway. Okay, and so how many of your landing craft were in that wave? Would you guess more or less? Oh, probably, probably. Well, we probably landed. Uh, we probably landed. Uh, uh, I, I, I think we landed two platoons abreast, so there'd be like 40, 40, 45 in this landing craft and 45 in this landing craft. In other words, my company. This is our this is our zone, and we'd have we'd have all 80, 90 men landing in that first wave, and then the rest of the company would be landing. Right behind them. Had they uh, the Navy softened it up any? Had they fired yeah, any shells? Yeah, pretty there? much. Pretty much. Uh, were you taking any uh, uh, fire uh, from the enemy when you were yes, going in? Yes, we were. Uh, uh, the uh, a lot a lot of the op uh, the opposition at the, the, the uh, gun emplacements at the beach, enemy gun emplacements, were knocked out. And uh, differing from Iwo Jima, which was Rock. I mean, they are uh, just solid rock. They, I mean, they'd had time to. They had gun emplacements there. That couldn't be knocked out here. This uh, Bougainville's pretty much, pretty much sand. Uh, I mean, the beach was not that heavy rock. And plus, plus there weren't that many. Uh, there weren't that many uh, Japanese there defending our particular beach. And it was such a big island that. They couldn't concentrate their defenses. Iwo Jima, small island. Uh, Bougainville, 100 miles, 125 miles long, I'm guessing. And, and the, you had multiple areas that you could have yeah. landed on, so they didn't know where. And of course, you try and pick, you try and pick the areas that they're, At least, yeah. that they're not going to have. Was it mostly defense. small arms fire that you were taking when going in? Uh, mostly, yes, yeah. So, you get on the beach. Ramp goes down and you guys run out, I guess. Uh, and, right. And so, uh, how far is it to shelter? I mean, are there trees to, out there or what? Yeah, 
it's yes, it's probably it's probably uh, probably 50 yards. We'd been aboard we'd been aboard that ship for like that particular operation. We'd been aboard that ship uh, at least two weeks. And what month was that, Mr. November, November, November of 43. November 43. So, November 1st. So you're out of shape. You're out of shape, and it is so hot. And you teach water discipline. I mean, guys, don't conserve your water. Well, <laughs> I was probably the worst. You're all, I mean, you're so, number Easy. one, you're scared, you're out of shape, you're excited, uh, and your water, and, and it's so hot, so humid, so water, water is really a problem. I mean, you just, and by the time you, the time you get across that beach, running in soft sand with a pack on your back and having people shooting at you, <laughs> you're exhausted. By the time you cross the beach, you're, if you're not if you're not dead or wounded, did you're you take, sure, take you're any ca time. did you take any casualties crossing the beach? Yes, uh, some, but not too many, not too many. We 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 did we had very few casualties in our, our that, that landing. Uh, then once you hit the once you hit the uh, the vegetation, it's the thickest jungle you ever saw in your life. It's just so, that jungle is so thick you can't believe it. And the swamp, it was just, it's a, just a swamp. And, uh, and for that was, we, we, we were very fortunate on Bougainville that the, the Japanese were not a, I mean, they were a problem, but I mean, there, there weren't that many of them. And other parts of the island, there were a lot of Japs, but. So did you have to, Cut your way through the jungle. I sure with, did. With what yeah. do you use? Uh, uh, machetes. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, the trees the trees that I remember most vividly are the banyan trees, big massive trees, and where the roots started about about six feet off the ground. The tree come the trunk comes down to here, and then the roots the roots are and the Japanese could uh, just get back in there, and you, you couldn't see them. You couldn't see them. And that was that was one of the biggest problems we had. How would you get them out of there? Well, you just uh, 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 locate locating. If you if you could ever locate, it, then the, you know you could you could get the job done. But the problem the problem was finding them, seeing them. You know, we don't know where the fire's coming from, and that that was a big problem. By getting, it would be like throwing grenade into there, or well, like the grenades weren't too effective, really. Uh, it, it's swampy, and you might really, it might land in water, and it was no, the grenades were not. Uh, they would not be too effective in a case like that. It just uh, the rifle fire was oh. really pretty much what, what what got the job done. Was it the same as we hear about all the time? Japs just don't. Would not surrender. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You get them, you get them cornered, they bonsai, uh, die for the emperor, go to heaven. Did you had you been told that this is what they're going to do beforehand, or I mean, not, no, not not really. Uh, we of course it, that was that might have been. That was probably before we heard so much about the kamikaze pilot, the pilots, that, yeah, uh, that would, you know, kamikaze right. dive right, right, the dive right into the aircraft carriers. Uh, but they did a lot of that on Guadalcanal, I think, too, didn't they? I, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. was. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. How long did it take you to, to? That operation. Well, we, we were out of there Christmas Day, or we, that's when we, uh, it was November 1st to December. So almost two, almost two months then. And uh, did you, uh, did 
Did they did they have snipers up in trees? Like oh yeah, yeah. They, that that's the biggest problem we faced. They had uh, snipers, and sometimes they'd get in the get them. Oftentimes they'd be up in that these banyan trees up off the ground, and they'd kind of they 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 cut in from the back, so. Uh, take the machete and cut out and they'd have a field of fire about like they have to have a field of fire about like that and they were little the Japs were they were little only about average one was only about four foot eight little bitty guys you know and and they, they they'd be up there I don't know how they'd do it they'd hang up there they'd get in there have a field of fire about like that and you couldn't you just couldn't see them but it took a direct hit casualties did you take then on the whole operation? We had on Bougainville, we had about, for our, uh, uh, my company, we had about uh, about uh, 35 total, about eight, about eight killed. Any officers? We had, uh, yeah, we had, uh, we had two officers uh, wounded, none killed, uh, in, 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 my, that, that was in my, in my company, in in the battalion, the battalion we had we had several officers killed. Now you probably didn't wear any identifying marks that you were an officer. I don't suppose. No, over there, would you? No, not like they did in private. Yeah, saving I know, private I know, yeah, well, that was one of the things <laughs> that, that we talked about. <laughs> uh, no, we sure did. Yeah. Uh, no, we we didn't want to look any different. I didn't want to look no, any I, different. From a listed man, I tell you, we had we had a lot of uh, uh, the the Japs would pick off anyone that looked different, and the corpsman, the hospital Navy corpsman, I had a tremendous amount of respect for them, but they're carrying, they're probably the most unique looking because they're carrying a big big, big medical kit, so the Navy corpsmen were, were really targets, not so much in Bougainville but other operations. Uh, Bougainville, the uh, jungle was so heavy, uh, but where snipers could pick off, could see, uh, a Jap sniper could see a Marine a couple hundred yards away and see somebody that's a little bit different, like a corpsman right. carrying it. He's the one he pick off. As far as identification, did you have a white stripe on the back of your helmet? No. No. <laughs> the officer that Did you have a, ra a radio uh, contact? Did you have a radio man in each uh, platoon? Or we, had, uh, <coughs> we had Navajo. We had Navajo was in. And uh, I'll tell you, the contact, the radio, radios were no good in that swamp. And back then, you know, 60 years ago, 60, 59 years ago, this was. Uh, of course, you didn't have the kind of equipment we have now. but. Our, the only communication, and, and, and in the heavy swamp, the lead, the lead platoon, would we'd have somebody there with a with a spool of wire, and you drop that wire, and and uh, back, however many yards, 200 yards, 500 yards, like every hour on the hour, we'd hook in, hook into that wire. Oh. And that, that was the only communication we had. Hmm. And you could imagine, you get out in the middle of heavy, heavy swamp, jungle, you didn't, you didn't know what was, I didn't know what was going on over there, over there. I suppose if you heard, heard a sound, you just fired. You just have to assume it's the enemy, huh? Well, it's out in front, yeah. You, 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 you never want to, you never want to fire. Sideways. Back, or sideways. Yeah. 
And of course, fire discipline was uh, very, 